What did you learn about your team from the Bahamas? Oh, we, we're, we're gritty. We've got some toughness to us. Um, and that we continue to be inconsistent. So, you know, it's a good and bad. How important is this game on Tuesday? It's kind of in the middle of what you've been playing. Yeah, well, these next, you know, this home stretch where we get to practice and be at home and get better, the very, very important um, uh, just to see how much progress we can make as far as our consistency. You know, this, the standard that we want to play at, you know, both offensively and defensively, and, and hopefully that help the young guys come along. They've shown that they can compete at a high, against teams that are a high level, and now this will give them an opportunity to hopefully have some success also with their competing. We'll be talking to Tyler and Cam and Senator Mike Tom. Can you please speak on just what kind of leadership you have seen suited by Cam and, and Tyler so far in the early season? Or <laughs> maybe they're playing abilities. Well, they're both good players, right? And. Um, See, uh, to me, leadership for me is, is about what are you doing for the other people around you, right? And I, we don't have enough guys, and those two in particular uh, are doing well on their own, but they're not helping anybody else come along yet. Um, and so that's the challenge for us to get to where we want to get to. If I'm the only person that's saying it and seeing it, um, then uh, we can't be the team that we're capable of being. And so that's that's the the push, the stretch. You know, um, those guys. When sometimes when you like each other, um, it's not always a, a good thing. <laughs> you know, sometimes you gotta go past like to love, and I love you enough to tell you the truth, and that's where we have to get to. Sounds like the leadership applications are still being taken. Yeah, yeah, but we're making progress now. We're making progress. We've seen some some good things, um, and then it's just now we have to build on that and the consistency of it. Coach, you've talked about the tempo with which you'd like to play. Are you getting the transition points that you want, and how do you improve that if not? Um, you know, I, I I like our pace. I don't like our execution in the pace, you know, and so um, if we can cut down on our turnovers and make sure we get a shot up every time, that that's going to help us. Um, you know, as, as this team continues to grow and evolve, there's what I like and then what's best, and that's where, as a staff, we're trying to figure out not just what we like, but what is best for the group. And it might be a little bit slower pace, uh, you know, it might be call a few more sets. Um, we're just we're working our way through that right now. Do you have a target date in mind for when Naquan might be ready to rejoin you guys? No, no, nothing's changed with Quan. After six games, what has pleased you most about your team? Uh, that uh, I feel like we're, we're we've continued to get better. Uh, I mean, you know, you play uh, USC and Miami and Providence in this stretch. Right, I mean those really good teams. I mean we could have played three other teams. Our record be different, but not have improved as much as we have. And so, um, and I like that uh, what our young guys are doing. I like that um, you know they're, they're they're making strides like quickly, and so that's that's exciting. What kind of stands out to you about your freshmen so far? They're not afraid. Uh, they're, they, they, they think they're better than the other guys on the team, and that, that's fun because, um, you know, talent-wise, they might be. You know, they just lack experience right now. Who are you? What have you, what are you seen from them? Well, you know, 
They're Summit League champions. They've got guys on their team that played in the Sweet 16 game and went to the NCAA tournament last year. Uh, McBride, you know, Kansas, Vanderbilt, NCAA tournament with Oral Roberts. You know, I mean, he's got a lot of experience. He's definitely the, you know, the straw that stirs that drink. And uh, the Thompson kid, he's been there a long time. Uh, the Shannon Weaver. Um, we've known him since he was a little kid and, you know, just six, seven block shots, can make a three. So they're going to space the floor well. They're, you know, they're not afraid. You know, they've, they've been in these environments before, so they're not going to walk in in, in awe of anything. They, they played A&M, I mean, you know, a couple more minutes, they, they, they might win that game. And so, you know, um, that, that, that whole league, that Summit League, man, they have really good teams, really well coached and um, guys that have been there a while, right? And so um, their experience is going to – and their ability to shoot the ball. Um, we're going to have to guard the arc and um, we're going to have to make them pay on the glass. You know, we have to get, get rebounds and, and score it, get the paycheck, you know, not just, you know, get rebounds. So. I think all three of their losses have been on the road, so uh, – Record may be a little misleading. Yeah, very, very, and 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 it's like that for a lot of those teams to get games. They got to go on the road, and so um, you know I've known Russell Springman for years, and Sam Patterson, who's on that staff. We were together at Baylor, and so I, I know. I mean, terrific coaches, terrific people, and um, high character kids. So they're going to keep fighting, and we, we, we're going to have to win that game. They're not. They're not going to beat themselves. What are some of the reasons that account for Tyler's slow starts? In games? Yeah. I, you know, when you're um, – for the last few years, a couple of years, he's just – he's been the guy at the end of the shot clock, you know, at the end of the play where it's, all he has to do is go, you know, make a shot, right? And now he starts the play and – it with not knowing if he's going to get it back at the end and, you know, does he attack early? You know, he's having to read ball screens. Um, he's having to make sure all his teammates get involved. So there's a lot of thinking that's going on with him going from being a secondary ball handler to being a primary ball handler. Um, so that that's going to take some time for him, him to come along. I think you could have probably asked the same question about Marquise last year. Right. I mean, early in the year, if you watch our, probably our first six or seven games, other than um, maybe the Nevada game, right, he, like, he wasn't sure. Like, he was trying to feel things out. And then as he figured out how to get everybody involved and still get his, um, his game took off. And so I expect there to be a big upturn, you know, end of December, January. Um, but this struggle is normal. And, and you see – then. I think as the game goes along, we get Day Day on the floor more, and he handles the ball, and Tyler gets to play off the ball, and gets him more shots, and gets him fizzle. So, um, he's got to learn how to do both of those things, and it's a process. Are you asking him to do more than maybe he has in the past two? Do you think? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're asking him to um, to think about his teammates, and uh, you know, know where every read is at, and and figure out who's hot, and get him another shot, and then then pick his spots and. You know, and um, if he picks a spot and misses and it's a tough shot, then it's not good. And if, you know, he thought a guy was open, it's a turn or, you know, the guy doesn't catch the ball, it's his fault. And when you're the point guard, everything that goes wrong is your fault, right? And so uh, so he's he's um, he's being stretched, and but it's good. It'll be good for him later on. With uh, David, can you take me back to what you really liked about him as a recruit and how you guys kind of linked up a year ago? I uh, like David's versatility, his speed, and his size. You know, in this league, you got to get guys with size. And uh, uh, got to watch some of his high school stuff, too, as we were going back, not just what he did at Virginia Tech, and saw him do some things in high school. And you say, man, there are some things this guy can do. And um, so that he's another guy who's being stretched, asked to do a bunch of things that are um, – weren't asked of him last year, and and he's trying to figure out how to do that, and still play his game. And uh, um, so, yeah, Dave, 
you know, his best basketball is ahead of him, and uh, it's just a, a matter of him having the confidence to do the things that we see him on the floor that we see him do in practice every day. What, what's different for him in the, in the new offense? Not necessarily in the new offense. It's like taking a leadership role, okay. right? Speaking out, um, you know, just just that, and uh, and you know, um, the goal was for him to play probably more five and be in the center of the floor with the ball against the, the opposing team's five. And because of things out of his control, he's playing a lot, a lot of four. And so now he's going against a smaller player that he has to attack a little differently, probably more from the side than from the middle. Um, so there's some moving around that's going, he's going to have to make some adjustments too. But um, you know, his, his, the work he did this summer, I think it'll, it'll pay off as we, as we continue to move forward. Everybody gets a little more comfortable. What kind of role did he play on, on the Netherlands team? Was it different? Or? Yeah, no, he was, I mean, he got to handle the ball. He got to make plays. He was a cutter. He was a roller. I mean, like, they moved him all over the floor. And his versatility on defense allowed him to do that. And, um, you know, so, um, you know, I, that, I think, will, is going to pay dividends moving forward. Glover just continuing to heal and get better? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we, it's a, uh, I think they said it was a four to six week recovery, and I wanted to make it a six to eight week recovery because don't want them to come back, um, you know, early again and have to have a relapse and stuff. Want to make sure he's completely healthy. And uh, Luke, everybody's felt good about it. He feels good about how things have come along, and so um, we'll get him. I, I would think end of December. What kind of point guard growth do you expect to see out of Darren uh, Day Day? Yeah, it's uh, every day he's going to continue to get better. And the thing about Day Day is he really believes in himself, and he's tough, like like mentally, physically, emotionally. You can coach him hard, and uh, he responds the right way. And, and, I mean, he wants to get better. Like he works in the gym, watching film. And so there's going to be a just a constant growth that's going to take place. And, um, I'm excited. He has a, has a bright future. Um, I don't put a like. It's not like a number on the growth or a percentage on the growth. It's just you see little things and how he listens and how he can translate. He's learning terminology for the first time in his life, you know. And uh, you know, the, actually, the day of practice, I had him talk me through something, um, and he was using regular people's talk and I was like no I want you to talk me through with our terminology and you know it took him a little bit and but once he learns how to speak our language then he'll be able to communicate better with everybody on the floor and so all of those are things that go into playing that position that's um, that, that can be difficult for people but he's embraced it. Did you see his toughness in, through the recruiting process? No I really didn't. I can't say that I did. I didn't realize that um, how competitive, you know, I knew he was a good player. I saw him get buckets. I saw him, you know, playing tough environments and stuff. But, you know, um, just the way he competes in the weight room, the way he competes in every sprint, you know, just like how he can, I mean, it, he's, he's, he's been the, the one person, if there's one that's really surprised me about, you know, um, all the intangibles that are there that, that I wasn't positive about. Ruth Arthur, were you, uh, he seems to have been more assertive in the last couple of games. Is that on him? Is that you guys preaching that or combination of, of the above, all of the above? Well, you know, we, we've asked Art to buy in to how we want to play and what we need him to do and when we need him to do it. And I think he's um, figured out he's figuring out the right spots, you know, when to be assertive. And, you know, obviously if, if you're assertive early and the ball goes in the hole, it looks like a great play. If you're assertive early and it's a turnover, a missed shot, it doesn't look like a great play. So, you know, one of the things, you know, as a coach, you, you, you love, you, you hate guys who do everything you tell them to do or do nothing you tell them to do. At some point in time, they've got to, like, 
see the play and go make it, you know, and then live with the consequences. And uh, and he, he's one of those guys. But what he's done recently is wait, you know, for the right moments as, you know, doesn't, he doesn't necessarily try to attack on the first side on, on against the set defense. And, um, and, and, and he's, his, his leadership, right? Like he's really, when you sacrifice for your teammates, that's a sign of leadership. And, and he's, re, he's done that and, and he's doing it more and more. So um, very pleased with, with his growth.